Hi, I'm Stephen Jones. At Robert Wood Johnson, we believe citizens need to be informed about the important health care issues affecting their lives. That's why we're proud to support the health care programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation. Distance Learning, next on Caucus New Jersey. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Berkeley College. PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 college savings plan. Turn a dream into a degree. And by Verizon Communications. Welcome to Caucus, New Jersey. I'm Steve Adubato. You know, getting your online degree is a growing trend, but some students out there are still kind of skeptical. Joining us here in the studio to talk about distance learning are our good friend, Dr. Dario Cortez, who is the president of Berkeley College. Dr. George Pruitt, president of Thomas Edison State College. Professor Ryan Mitchell, online professor at DeVry University. And finally, Melissa Johnson, online student at Berkeley College. Good to have you all with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, log on to our website. We'll tell you everything we know about online learning. Darryl, let me ask you. Uh, we've talked about this issue before. 80% of your students right now, and this is interesting with Melissa here, 80% of your students online um, are women? What's going on? Are women smarter than men when it comes to online? Do they know something we don't? Well, I, I, I won't comment on that, but... Uh, <laughs> well, they, they, come on, they do know things we don't. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get that right. That we well, don't why, why 8 out of 10 women? I, I tell you, I think for... When you look at gender, I think uh, uh, women in particular uh, have complex lives. You know, they're adults, they're working, they have children, uh, they have lives. Uh, many times it's a lot easier for them to engage in a college career, college education, because they can take courses at any time, any place, and the ability to do it, the institutions like ours who engage in this, and we do it extremely well, we provide that opportunity for the students to have the flexibility to take courses and get a degree and get in their careers. What percentage of your students right now, of your by the way, student body total, how, about how many? It's about uh, a, a little bit over 8,000 8, students. Of the 8,000, how many are we talking online now? We're talking about... And growing. Well, I'll give you numbers. Uh, for instance, we have 2,500 students taking courses online, both online fully uh, and blended, uh, 2,500. Uh, students taking the entire degree online, about 1,000 students. Okay. Now, your situation is fascinating. Yes. You're, we were talking before we came in the studio. Yes. You have tremendous passion for what you're doing. A yes, I do. A few years ago, you didn't see it as a possibility, right? No, not at all. What happened? Um, I decided to make a career change. I felt that I was getting older and I said, you know, I want to be able to give my daughter an example of, you know, don't stop after high school. There's a life past high school. Um, at first, I felt completely nervous. You know, I felt I was too old to start college. But then I said, well, why not? You know, it's a good thing, you know, I'll go there and walk myself <coughs> down to Berkeley College. And I stood outside and I said, no, nah, I'm not doing this. And I walked away, but something told me, go back. There's something about the school you just got to do. And I went there, signed my name on the dotted line, and three years later, I'll be graduating in April. You'll be graduating in April? This April, April 27th at the IZAD Center. What's that feel like? Uh, overwhelming. <laughs> overwhelming because I'm actually the first person in my immediate family to get my bachelor's degree. And, you know, where I come from, a Hispanic European background, that's a tremendous you know, thing to look at. You know, I have four younger sisters. Mm. And it's, you know, they, I have four younger people who are actually looking up to me as an example. And to me, it's just very fulfilling. You know, before I go to our two other colleagues, you told us real quick uh, a story about you're going to Virginia, there was a family reunion. And Funny you said there was story, a choice yes, that you had to make. You were thinking, hey, I got to make a choice. I got a family reunion, but then I got school. And then you said what? Um, I totally forgot that I was online because <laughs> I was so used to going downtown to the campuses. Uh, there are two campuses, Midtown and Downtown. And as Dr. Cortez had mentioned previously, I was doing blended classes at first. Right. And um, it came around the time that we had a family reunion. And I'm going in the car. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to miss class for this whole week. I have two papers due. <laughs> so I get to the hotel. I'm like, 
wait a minute, didn't I pack my laptop? And sure enough, I sat in the hotel room and I took every one of my classes. What's your message to everybody else right now? It says, not for me, I can't do it. It's you, I usually, from my experience, I've always noticed the second semester. They're like, oh, I can't do this. No, oh, it's too pressure. Mm -hmm. What do you say to them? Take a deep breath. <laughs> Look at yourself in the mirror and say, I can't do it. There's no way that I cannot do it. I can do it. And you psych yourself up. And you look at other people for inspiration. Dr. Cortez, for example, I look up to say, you know what? I know if, if he can make it, I can definitely go up there. I know I can. And you psych yourself up. And I'm so glad that I did that to myself. You know, Daria, I just told uh, Don Chalice, a good friend of marketing, you got a commercial working right here. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you something, George. Sure. You, you, you've been in this business for a long time, education. When you see a young lady like this, I see you shaking your head. What goes through your mind? Uh, it's why we do what we do. Mm. This is why we, what, why we do what we do. You know, you, I have been at Thomas Edison a long time, and I've never yet left that stage without a lump in my throat because I see that we make a difference in people's lives and that if we did not do what we do, these students wouldn't be at other colleges and universities. They Describe yours. How's yours different from Berkeley? So we'll do uh, DeVry in a second. Well, we're a little different than Berkeley in that we were created exclusively to serve older students. Yeah. And Berkeley has a very diverse student body. We're a specialist institution. The average age of our student body is 40. And we don't admit students under the age of 21 unless they have an associate degree from a community college or whether they're in the military. So the demographics are different. Mm -hmm. But the flexibility and the opportunities are the same. Mm -hmm. uh, we have processes that are very, very similar. Uh, distance education is essentially a tool, and it's used differently depending on the project that you're working on, the client base, the subject matter. Absolutely. But it provides great flexibility and opportunities for people to overcome access barriers, yeah. and that's why it's such a powerful, powerful tool. I'm going to ask this all the way around, but how do you get your faculty ready to do this? Because I've always thought about this as someone who has taught at different institutions of higher learning in communication and leadership courses. Dario and I have talked about this a lot. I always say, I don't know if I could do what I do because I teach public speaking and how to executive presence. I think I could do that online. I keep thinking, how do you, does one translate certain content and subject matter? That's one thing. How do you prep faculty members, which I'll come to in a second, how do you prep faculty members to be effective online? Well, that's a complicated question. We had an advantage because we were one of the first institutions in the country to start this. And so the faculty came to us, the ones that were techies, that saw the potential, they were excited about it. Mm. Uh, so from other institutions, they came to us because they saw the ability to experiment with something new that really wasn't happening at these traditional campuses. Right. And then as we ac accumulated a critical mass, their colleagues joined them. And so we've always had a faculty that's been very much in tune with this. This is their thing. Yes. But as it has spread and become more common, and pretty much every college and university in America right now is You can't not do this. Of, you, you, sh you shouldn't be able to not do this. <laughs> <laughs> but trying to create change and to try to get people to embrace it, change is always threatening. Ryan, jump in. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, you know, social, social media is, you know, commonplace now. Uh, people are online with online books. Um, so having the flexibility to be able to learn online, you know, in general makes sense. But as a faculty person to learn about teaching online, at DeVry we have a two-week online uh, learning uh, program. So where, where, where the faculty are online acting as if they were a student engaging in threaded discussions. So well, again, threaded discussion? Yeah, we have online discussions with the students on a weekly basis. Uh, students were given uh, perhaps one or two topics per week in which Students have to post in this discussion. Okay. The faculty members are engaged in that discussion. So as part of our training, we learn how to do effect, effective discussions. Um, <clears throat> and just, some, some don't get to be where they need to be, and they shouldn't do it. Uh, I mean, the, the fact is, not everyone is cut out to do this, Dario. It's true. I, it, it, in fact, you're not I, just a college president. You're an educator. Absolutely, absolutely. I started uh, as a faculty member, and so I, I was telling him that earlier that I looked everything through the lens of a faculty. Right. Uh, and it's true. It, 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 in fact, as a student, as a faculty, the the ability to to engage, we 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 learn. We uh, the practice is that if you're good in the classroom, face to face. <coughs> The likelihood in mo that you're going to be a, an excellent teacher online is, is almost equivalent. Why? 
Because I think it's, it's commitment, it's uh, the ability to engage with your students, the ability to organize yourself, yeah. to organize your curriculum, to prepare. To ask good questions. To ask good questions. Yes. The difference, I think, uh, we, for instance, at Berkeley College, we have a, the uh, online course resource. And what that is, is basically a platform that allows the faculty and the students to engage with each other uh, through a blackboard, which is a course management system. Yes. And basically what they do, they put everything online. Uh, from the first day of classes, this system is an embedded textbook. So the students really automatically, within the first week of class, they're engaged with the faculty member in making the assignments, developing the curriculum. Uh, you can highlight information. You can put information in the chapter. You can print it. You can do all kinds of important virtual technology tools that helps the learning process and, uh, and educates the students on a very ongoing basis and it interacts not only with the instructor or with the faculty member, but more important, it does it with the rest of the class. Right. So whatever you put online, everybody's watching this chat and, and, room. And sorry for interrupting, sure. but students are asking, you've asked, you asked questions that no one else has brought up, Professor so-and-so, I don't understand something, I've got a question. Um, it's very, as uh, he had mentioned, very interactive. The professor gets back to you like instantly. You'll see a message come up uh, yeah. according to the question that you asked. They're very interactive with uh, the discussion boards. Going back to what Dr. Cortez said, you've got to be engaged. You have to be completely right, right. engaged. Yeah, we're in the threads. Faculty are, are in the threads more or less constantly. Is that we're what it's called? Yeah, we call them threaded discussions. Threads, yeah, we call in them these uh, discussions. Dis discussion board well, so, threads. Hold on, give me, let me get this straight. So I think to myself, when I go and teach a class, I'm there, I'm engaged, right. I'm doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. When I'm not, I'm not. Mm -hmm. You're saying the difference is, Ryan, I've got to be checking my stuff? Yes. Mm -hmm. you, have go ahead. To, you have to be in because you figure for a four credit class, for example, you might be in the classroom eight hours a week. So, well, you're not in the classroom, so you need to be equally engaged you know, with the students in, on, the, on the computer, online. You make it sound like in some ways the student and the faculty member may actually have to be more engaged Yes, online. they really they have yes. to be. And the faculty person has yes. to be able to really draw the student out and ask probing yes. questions. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we're available on via email, yes. via the phone. So this is so interesting. A faculty member who may delude him or herself, George, into thinking, oh, this is a way of not having to work so hard they couldn't be more wrong. They couldn't be yeah, more wrong. Really the yeah. fact yeah. of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, is if done properly, it's more rigorous. Yes. Yes. And if done right. If done right. properly. And if not done right, it comes out quickly. Well, if not it done, becomes apparent. Well, yes, apparent but, but you know, again, right. back to the issue of a tool. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, there are large lecture halls, there are laboratories, there are seminars, mm -hmm. there's distance education. If done. All of them are great if they're done well. Yes. None of right. them are any right. good if they're not done properly. Right. right. Uh, but it is rigorous. It requires uh, engagement. And all of the research on this has demonstrated that the outcomes at the end of this experience are as, be as good or better than the outcomes one produces in a traditional class. In terms of what? Student achievement, student learning? All of the above. Uh, uh, the out uh, the mastering ma of the mastery, content? The mastery of the content and learning objectives yeah, of the course. When it's done well. I when done when well. It's, when it's done well. Derry, how are you monitoring and evaluating faculty members who teach online? Well, basically, we, we have a team of professional the faculty members that uh, oversees the work from the design of the curriculum to support uh, the linkage of information, digital connections that they want to make. They support the training for Blackboard, you know, Blackboard 101, 102, mm -hmm. is beginning, intermediate. Uh, the support of faculty when they get stuck with technology, they can call Berkeley College Online and they get all the support. They get the library, the advisement, the registration, financial aid. It's all con connected. It's all uh, in one location that allows the students to get the support at the distance, in addition to getting an outstanding faculty member engaging with the students through the, the processes that we have. Marissa, let me ask you a question. Sure. Uh, one of the things I've always liked is when I have, when I see students of mine coming together, I'll force them, say there are 16 students in, mm -hmm. in I've, I taught at one of the universities in a cohort, a cohort group of people, they go all the way through getting their master's or PhD, and they'll form these small groups that are working on these projects. I love the idea they're in this cohort, you know, and they share <clears throat> information, they're back and forth, they're spending time together. I often think online you're isolated. You're not engaging each other. You may be engaging a faculty member, but I often say, 
I wonder if they're really talking to each other, they're spending time getting to know each other, sharing information, struggling, helping each other. You raise a very interesting point because that was one of my skeptics of going online. You know, you don't have that one-on-one, -on -one, very personal interaction with an actual human being. You were skeptical about that whole thing? Correct. I was just very skeptical of it. I was a full-time campus student for about a year. Oh, so you had that experience? Oh, I had that experience. Okay. So I can speak on both sides of it. And um, at first, I looked at it and I said, okay, you know, I'm going to try it out. But you do actually interact. Com I mean, we have a um, some, something similar to AIM. What? A, um, instant messaging. Oh, okay. There's a window there that you can actually um, contact a fellow student and say, you know, I'm kind of having a problem with this. Do you have any pointers? And boop, message pops up. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've done it before. Time out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Listen, give, let me get this straight. Dario's in your class. You're like, Dario, Ryan, a professor, you know, Mr. just came up with such and such. I don't know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Do you understand this? And you're saying, now, do you, do you, do you email Dario or another student or you just the whole class and just say, does anyone get this? I need some help. What do you do? Um, there's actually Send up smoke signals and say, <laughs> I'm, I'm in trouble? No, 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 no seriously, yes, I'm curious. Yes. Well, actually, there's a few ways. You can e email the stu fellow student or you can put a general posting on uh, Blackboard through the discussion board. Does anybody have any pointers on this? Please wow. respond. And it's like you'll get three or four students, yeah, I know this, and oh, yeah, I know that. And, right. right, and then you get, like you said, those little groups that start forming, and we, I've even arranged for a study group. You've arranged yes. study group. Hold on, let me get this straight. And there are, have you, in some cases, never met these people? Never met them. George, help me here. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's never true. And have real relationships. Absolutely. I, I genuinely feel they're real. I mean, yeah. I, Go ahead. I feel this is that wild. They're, they're awesome. You know, I laugh every time that comes up about the ability to connect. Yeah. If you question that, look at the dating sites. People are oh. meeting and getting oh. married online. Oh, right. oh yeah. they can achieve that level of intimacy. You know, figuring out how, what to do with your political science is a piece of cake. Let me get this straight now, George. You are now, this is a program on, on distance learning. You are now saying that one of the other advantages in distance learning is that your romantic life could be improved dramatically? Well, I'm just saying. That <laughs> I'm just saying that whole, <laughs> we're taping the show the day after Valentine's Day. That's right. Yeah. I'm just saying that no there's pressure. a whole nother industry. That's a commercial for his school, not a right. <laughs> But there's a whole nother industry that has demonstrated that You're people right. can meet, connect, Never and, thought and about have that. very important personal relationships using the technology to mediate. So I would simply okay. say that, that the it. engagement and the quality of the engagement that takes place in this way uh, is very effective. A any video yeah. involved here? Oh, I, 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 go ahead. I, I, absolutely. I, I think the, the video is part of the whole. Where does it fit? Well, it fits in the classroom. Uh, the instructor could actually include a link to, to a Good site. Uh, they can get something from yeah. YouTube. I mean, social media yes. uh, media becomes an important role in this. I yes. mean, you mentioned it as well. Right? You know, I'm just yeah. realized I'm teaching a course at NYU right now um, in media. And I'm realizing right now, Jackie Cook, one of our producers here, is also the teaching assistant. And I realize right now, even though I don't teach the course online, it's a Saturday uh, uh, graduate level course, I'm realizing, because it's a media and advertising related course, we'll say, listen, check out this such and such video. And Jackie, as the teaching assistant, will send the link mm -hmm. and we'll say, check out this video. Here are the four questions we'll, we want you to explore. Right. And be prepared to submit this one page reaction paper. Yeah. I'm realizing that's yeah. not. Online. Well, you know what? There's an online component. Help yeah. me, Ryan. Well, we would do that through through threaded discussions. Uh, through our discussions, we'll have either instructors post uh, videos or or a link to a website for the, so you can read a paper or sure. a PDF uh, and give comments on that. Uh, students Is there animation likewise, involved sometimes too? Sorry for Well, talking. we have virtual laboratories. <coughs> a virtual laboratory. Uh, well, for <coughs> science for science courses, they have a lab component. And the way that labs are done online is through virtual labs. So f say, for example, you wanted to do a chemistry experiment. Mm. Well, you may not have physically have the hardware to do that, but you can, you can virtually do chemical reactions by mixing chemicals in a virtual environment and look at how reactions proceed. You can do biology, uh, bi biology experiments. This, this whole thing is evolving. It's evolving. Yeah. Yes. But, but let me try this in, in, in the spirit of, of challenging um, or at least asking some challenging, important challenging questions. There's been some media, there have been some media reports of some private institutions that some have said 
have some online initiatives that, uh, frankly, are not as rigorous as some others, and that standards may not be as high as the standards being described right here. Okay. That's right. absolutely true. How do we get at that and keep the standards high? Well, you know, people have to be sophisticated in their choices, and sometimes that's difficult without help. But there are, uh, there are institutions, there are individuals that have taken advantage of these processes, and they've exploited them. You know, I'm, you know I, one of the discussions that I had, Dario, before I came on the show, I know these two institutions. And they by the way, what's accredited versus non-accredited mean? Well, the, whether an institution is accredited by their peers and by the quality assurance bodies that are recognized by the Secretary of, Higher, uh, Secretary of Education. These things matter. Yes, but you have to be careful there because there are, there are institutions that are diploma mills. There are accrediting bodies that are diploma mills that are fraudulent. And even among the accrediting institutions, there's a great controversy right now going on, and, uh, and uh, it's, it's kind of unfortunate, but there's a big policy discussion going on about the value of proprietary institutions versus non-proprietary but, but, but we're trying to help folks right now, George, make sense of all this and make smart, educated decisions as consumers. Where are they going to get that? Well, they, you know, if, if, if you're in high school, talk to your high school guidance counselors. Talk to you, If you're working, talk to your human resources people and the corporations and companies. If you're in the military, talk to your military-based education officers. These people tend to keep track of the institutions. Mm -hmm. Look for objective data. Look at pass rates on statewide examinations. Right. Uh, you know, do shop. Uh, check with colleagues and peers that have gone to institutions and find out what kind of experience they have. So the experience you're talking about, that matters. Absolutely. No one can say, someone say, well, that's not peer-reviewed. That's not statistical or quantifiable, but that's your experience. Absolutely. And that matters. Absolutely. Um, just to, <clears throat> to mention, you know, you can't just say, okay, this school looks good. You know, you shop around. You compare Berkeley to DeVry, DeVry to this institution, and you see how much different each one compares to each other. And that's actually how I ended up at Berkeley, because I compared three different colleges. Was it also word of mouth? Uh, no, actually, no. no. You just went to places and you had a feel? Yep. Dario, talk to us about this. This is a big issue. It's a big issue at the national level. I think George kind of explained it. You know, you need to look at the uh, at the. How do you separate yourself? Well, I, I start with you know, uh, Berkeley College is the bride of uh, Thomas Edison. You know, we're regionally accredited, so you begin with the the premise that the, you're regionally accredited. That has a standard that you have to uh, start with. The other one is the the quality of the institution, and, and you can tell that by looking at graduation rates, you look at uh, retention rates, you look at the quality of our faculty. You know, Berkeley College, ha half of our faculty are full time, right. doctorally prepared. You look at that content. You know, what Berkeley about employment rates? An employment rate, of course, absolutely. Are the students getting jobs? Are they getting internships like we do at Berkeley? Uh, a required Where does internship. one find that? You find it in our website. I mean, if you look at Berkeley College, we have a place of public accountability. And they would give you everything from graduation rates to employment rates to retention rates to uh, the fall rates. Everything is out there. Do, do you guys do you guys offer that? Uh, yes. Do, do you guys I, offer that? Yes. I just want to make sure all the way around. Yeah, it's point. almost required by by the government nowadays with all the uh, regulations. But but it's it's, it's really uh, the transparency that you need. It's all about the quality of the academic experience and. And if you you start with that, and it uh, and you look at the institutions, you know Berkeley College is uh, 80 years. We just celebrated 80 years in 2011. So right. we wouldn't be in business for 80 years if we're not doing a good job. Let's do this in the, in the limited time we have left. Are there certain characteristics of students who tend to do well in a distance learning situation? Go. Motivated students. Motivated. M students have to be independent, independent, highly driven. And in my experience, uh, the students that do online are definitely motivated. The ones that do well are the ones that will engage in the material, be on time, be responsible, and, and uh, persistent. What do you and, got? And Let's persistent. go. Um, Who will succeed? I, if you dedicate yourself, you know, dedication is a very big thing. You know, motivation, motivating each other. You know, getting online saying, you know, moving your fellow students saying, you know, we can do this. We came this far. There's no looking back. You know, t touching bases with the professor saying, you know, getting some boosts of morale. I've done that numerous times. You know, I've emailed a professor, oh, my God, I don't think yeah, I can do this. And you get back, uh-uh. You, uh, with, <laughs> I don't know or I can't is not in your vocabulary at all. I got to tell you something. Yes. First of all, I want to thank all of you for, for being with us. But a special thank you to you. No let me tell you, you're going to look back on this tape, you're going to see a PBS show, and your family and your friends are going to be so proud of you 
because you're such a great role model. We're proud of you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 20 years of broadcast excellence, and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Berkeley College. PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan. Turn a dream into a degree. And by Verizon Communications. Promotional support provided by NJ Biz, All Business, All New Jersey. And The Star Ledger and NJ.com, Everything Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. The value of New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Company has come from our experienced, dedicated team for almost a century. Auto and homeowners insurance for employees of New Jersey Business and Industry Association members, deposit accounts, and loans for the general public through NJM Bank. We're here to work for the interests of our customers, not stockholders. More about a unique kind of relationship is at NJM.com. NJM, where experience pays dividends. Hello, I'm Rafael P. Roman. And I'm Steve Adubato. Join us every week on New Jersey Capital Report. Because we'll ask the questions that you want and need answered. Airing on NJTV 13 and WHYY. Check your local listings.